welcome everybody to the Monday, November 14th, 2022 meeting of the Conway Select Board. And at 5 15, we become the joint meeting of the Select Board. And it's going to be easy. Um, call the meeting to order. I'm Philip Cantor, Chair of the Conway Select Board. Next to me is Erica Goldman. And next to her is Chris Waldo. And with us, as always, Ronnie Williams with the town manager. And Adam Lee, the assistant to the town manager. And John. <laughs> First item vote to approve the minutes of November 7th. Approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. The warrants meetings attended by select board members. <laughs> uh, none. And I've met uh, Frontier School Committee meeting. I have school related meetings every other day this week. Two of them tomorrow, one Wednesday, two Thursday. Um, the book is the budget is. Starting to work on the budget already. And, uh, yeah. um, and then lots of other informal meetings as well. Public comments, anybody? New business. Vote to appoint Seth Capista, Capista, Capista to the Capital Improvements Committee. Is that you, Seth? That's me. Hello. Hello. Um, you want to tell us about yourself and uh, just just a very little brief? Uh, sure. My name is Seth Capista. Um, live here in Conway on South Structure Road. I'm a builder and a woodworker. I um, guess I've lived in Conway for about 10 years. Uh, my wife grew up here, Anna Meyer. Um, yeah, I don't know. How's that? That was very. That was a very good. That was very good. Um, Great. Yes. Yes. And you are you were recruited by Chris. That is correct. And and, and how how did that recruitment come about? How how is that? I reached out to them because I knew Seth owned his business, and then um, him and Anna run Heart Farm. So I thought they would be. Uh -huh. Yeah, I thought they okay. would be um, either one of them would be a good candidate to join in on the committee. Wonderful. So, so you know Chris, and you're still willing to serve on the same committee as Chris. <laughs> that is, is true. Which is a really good so that, that's a that, that's a good sign. Um, <laughs> uh, so, anybody have any other questions for Chris for uh, Seth or Chris? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and what what is the length of the term that we are appointed for? A hundred years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rest of your natural life. There you go. Is that binding? <laughs> yeah. I don't think we decided on that yet, did we? No. And but since there, we have a number of new people, it's up to you if you want to stagger. Yeah, you have say, to be staggered. I want to stagger. Yeah. So maybe we should say we can't do past 6:30:25. So probably 6:30:24. All right. So this is a six, your your length of uh, term in office would be till June thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. You. Uh, that sounds fine to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, uh, so I'll move to approve Seth Capista as the Capital Improvement Committee member for the term ending of June thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, it's unanimous. Welcome, Seth. Thank, thank you. you. For your, thank you for your service. And, uh, Happy to be hopefully here. Hopefully you want to re-up at the end of it. Yes. Yes. Um, and you're welcome to hang out, but that's really all that we well, have. For, well, at 5.15. No, oh, no. Actually, yeah, no, you can't go anywhere. 5.15. 5.15. Yeah. Or we can do. Yes. Um, so next item. Discuss and vote to sign the letter to MassDOT regarding the replacement bridge, temporary replacement bridge that they have the ability to put up. Any 
everybody give any thoughts? It's a good letter. I thought it was good. Yeah, I drew it. I signed it. <laughs> Just to just to update you, um, Mr. Burnett did bring to me both his letter signed uh, with the offer of the easement, and he also put together a list of all the assessed value of all the properties that are affected by this. Yeah. So that you know, heaven for Fen, we had something that they weren't able to get to them for fire. So that would be included. So I'm gonna um, just because there are people that are really care about this issue right now. I'm going to read this letter that the town is sending out. Um, to the district highway director of MassDOT and Lennox, um, thank you for reaching out to the town concerning the state of our bridge on North Poland Road. We understand that the bridge had to be closed immediately and are very thankful nobody was injured prior to its closing. Our understanding is that the bridge has been on the Mass DOT schedule for replacement in 2024, slated to begin, begin construction that spring. Conway is a very large town made up of roughly 64 miles of roads with many open spaces and hilly terrains. The closed bridge is on a critical throughway for those living in the area. Unfortunately, there simply is, is not an alternate solution to detour, particularly in the winter months. Hardship concerns include an inability to now access a dry fire hydrant on North Pole, which lies beyond the closed portion of the bridge and services 98 households, many of which house an aging population. Another major concern is the extensively lengthened response times for fire, police, and ambulance services. A chart which lists the road affected by the closure is attached, which includes the households on each road and the length of the six affected roads. The estimated increased response time in favorable weather is 10 to 15 minutes. In bad weather conditions, that time will be considerably longer. We have included a map showing the difficulties in rerouting traffic, bringing to your attention unsafe road conditions in the winter season on several surrounding roads. This is particularly the case for Bullet Road, a gravel one-way road that is not maintained in winter. Some towns may not be able to respond to a request for mutual aid with certain equipment due to the weight limits in some of those roads. The detour route on road suitable for emergency response vehicles is approximately 9.8 miles. The rerouting of school buses now means that some children are on the bus for at least an hour, up to 90 minutes each way. This re rerouting also adds an unanticipated cost for transportation and likewise affects our postal service. If the current timeline stands, having this bridge closed for two years will be a severe hardship. We have expended all of our Chapter 90 monies. We have no other funds available to construct a new bridge. Given all these hardships, the town respectfully requests installation of a temporary bridge before the winter weather sets in. And then it's signed by the Select Board, Fire Chief, Ambulance Director, Chief of Police, Highway Superintendent, Town Administrator, Frontier Regional School Superintendent, and the Common Room Superintendent. So, um, did we move to vote to, to sign it yet? Um, I'll move that we vote to sign it. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Still have five minutes. Do you want to start on the one on the one? Or the, Phil, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, do we have an assurance from Lenny Gripko that he will drive a bus over the main Poland road to get to South Poland? So, you know, to get it's the, not the drive, it's not the road, it's not the road so much as the turnaround options that are the big concern. <clears throat> and it, it, you know. But it's also the road, but um, yet he ha they have driven that in the past. And, it, you know, he, and it's not their favorite and it's bad in real wet conditions. Um, but I mean, so is Rowing Brook Road. So are a bunch of other roads that he has to drive on. So it's, you know, the, the problem with it is the, the increase in mileage that our, our contract with the bus company is based on route on, on approved routes. And it's a significant per mile surcharge. And, um, and, and it's not budgeted for. 
and but it has to be paid. So it's one of those things where the school will have to, you know, in order to pay for that, there's other things that are going to have to fall by the wayside, which is not desirable at all. So it is, it's a big deal. It's also a real big deal to have a kid on a bus for 90 minutes. Um, even if it is a really nice trip and a beautiful view, generally speaking. Um, but but uh, you know th those are those are really bad things. Like we 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 set it up so that this the, the school bus trip is usually no more than thirty minutes each way um, for the kid. You know. And so, uh, but but Lenny Gripko has actually been very cooperative with us, and they're they're really really good people to work with. I, I love Lenny, and I feel bad that he's going to have to drive through the Poland Gap every day, twice a day, or four times a day. Yeah, um, it's it's weird seeing our bus driving through downtown Ashfield to get to Conway too. So, uh, is that what they're going to do? They're going to have to go through Ashfield. Yeah, go no, they're not going to drive on the Poland Road. That. Um, uh, maybe that's uh, yeah. Um, I, I I know I know the route to there to to the, all those homes that are going to be affected. I didn't. I don't know the route back from it, but the route to it does not in involve Main Poland Road. It's going all the way up 116 and then out Williamsburg Road. Um, uh, you know, so, so that's a considerable number of miles in a, in the town of Ashfield. Uh, so that's not okay. So you're you're asking answering my question. Good, there there are two families from Ashfield that that school choice into Frontier. And now the bus passes right past their house. So all of a sudden, there's two families that are really happy that live in Ashfield because they're going to be able to take the bus every day. And now they can't. Um, uh, but the, the, yeah, there's the, the, the big thing is to try to avoid the, uh, the undesired, you know, un unanticipated costs because there's no, there's no fat in the budget that's able to accommodate that. So, so. That's about. Yeah, just, to, just to add to that, Dar Dar Darius and Lenny Gribko, they both said that of all of the bridges in all of our towns, there's none that could have gone out of service that would result in a longer detour. Right. Uh, uh, let's hope the state will put in the temporary bridge. Yes. Yes. We're trying. We're trying. So we have three corners. Oh. Yes. Yes. Um, so, so it's 515. Well, it's like 14, but we're going to be going into a joint meeting with the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvement Committee. Triple header, rare triple header. Very efficient, government. So, do you want to call your meetings to order? Uh, sure, I move to call the joint meeting to order for the Capital Improvement Committee. Uh, with me is here is uh, Roy Cohen. On Zoom, we have Bob Armstrong and Seth Batista. Hi, Steph. Can I call the finance meeting order? We have John Cohen, Roy Cohen, and Singer. So um, we have one item on the agenda, um, and that's to discuss and vote the financial war article. Because you voted on some, but not all. Don't deserve his candies. All right. So um, we'll just start at the top, if that's okay with everybody. Sure. Um, Article one: the Finance Committee voted four nothing. Capital Improvement Committee voted three nothing. This is to create the capital stabilization fund for the Frontier Regional School. So I'm going to make a motion for the select board to approve this article. I second that. And 
all in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's a unanimous figure. <clears throat> Article two, the fire department pickup truck. With us to, to discuss this is Chief uh, Baker. To see, so Article two reads, to see if the town will vote to appropriate from any available source $68,470 for a new pickup truck for the fire department or take any action relative thereto. Uh, for a used pickup truck. Well, no, that's um, I, I read the article as it stands. Okay. The, the mm. finance committee recommendation um, states that there was a motion to delay a decision pending receipt and review of prepare estimates for the current pickup truck from two certified mechanics for nothing. And we'll talk about that. And then the capital improvements committee recommendation was for a used truck up to 50,000. Three months. So there's two different schools of thought at work there. And, um, <laughs> and you know, and, and yeah. And so before the select board drives in a completely different direction altogether, mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about, so for first the finance committee, um, could you explain this is, I mean, I, we've been doing this a long time. I don't ever remember you, the finance committee, not choosing A or B, but instead of making it, but instead making a motion for a, a different choice. Well, yeah. Phil, Phil, there is no current pickup truck. Yes, there is. Well, there's a, it's not a pickup truck. It's not a pickup truck. It is a, a SUV. You called it a pickup truck, so. That... Yes, you're right. Thank you. Um, well, I mean, the problem is, is that that they would like to be able to carry hoses and things like that in the back of the pickup truck that they can't fit in the SUV. Right. Yeah. You know. All right. So, finance committee, we did a motion to delay a decision. Yeah, we, we we wanted more information. You know, the quotes actually for fixing the current vehicle. And then there was also discussion that maybe the area department has a uh, four cab pickup truck that could be brought over to the, the uh, fire department. So that was brought up. So we just said, you know, at this point, let's discuss this and see if we're, we're, I'm looking at all the options. Is there anything else? So we feel that we have the most informed decision to uh, make it. So, yes, yes, this is where we turn to Chief Baker and say, Chief, what do you have to say about this? <laughs> Uh, wherever you'd like, I guess, or here, okay, sure. Okay, so this is a little bit more food for thought for everybody before you make your final decision. I took uh, what recommendations that Veronique mentioned that you had at your last meeting and. I went out and got estimated costs for appraisals on the vehicle that we have in system. And the minimum cost for an appraisal is $200 per appraisal. It could go up depending on how long they take to do the appraisal. If you go from stem to stern. Okay. So that would be, a, if you wanted to get two appraisals on it, it would be a minimum $400. Why I was at one of the garages. And Rico, I said, you know, I have never talked about possibly trading in the old vehicle. Let's see if we could get in. So, unbeknown to me, and it was kind of a shock of fact, because I know when we took the ownership of the old Tahoe from the police department, the only reason it was that was because the old one that I had before was really bad. Worse off than any of them we ever had. And the dealership was only going to give them $1,000 for the old vehicle. So the town board to give that, that your police cruiser to me. And that's what I can drive. So when I went over to the dealership the other day, I asked them, you know, maybe we should look more closely into used vehicles. And I'd like you to try to give me an appraiser, uh, appraisal on the vehicle that I'm driving. And they bought the top one. Take a look at it. So I have an official uh, appraisal here on it. And 
the appraiser came in and $8,000 trade them back. So give us $8,000 toward another year's vehicle. Mm -hmm. One of the other year's vehicles that I thought we might be into because they were moved pretty fast and no longer on a lot. So he just picked one off his inventory list. So this is this one of the quickly go. Okay. It's a 2021 Chevrolet Silverado 1500. That's half done. Four door, four wheel drive. Everything we basically want on it. Go back and things like that. List for 30, they were asking $38,000 for. So if you look at that with the trade, you're only looking at oh, just under $31,000. But you had that, this one in particular had 32,000 miles on it. And they asked him about warranties and stuff like that. Say, well, if you get uh, one that's got any General Motors warranties left on, it's automatically transferred over to. So this one would have some left on it. This is probably gone now. And this is last week. You know, this is new, new now. Okay. So <clears throat> if you're going to talk about going used, you might be able to look at $31,000 or so. But again, that's at the point of when it comes time to make a new town meeting approve that. You have to go up shop on they don't, they won't, or they won't sure. hang on anything for you unless you give them a healthy deposit. And I'm very certainly not doing that. Um, that does not include that thirty-one thousand dollars. Does not include does not include the uplifting of the vehicle, which means adding radios, lights, and a, a leather head on the door, saying some fire department. And on the past, uh, Philip mentioned that if you like to see. All the town vehicles have a letterhead on the door so you know who's in it. Which is not a bad idea. So you'd be looking at probably close to or right around forty thousand dollars for a few a two-year-old year's vehicle. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's some different than the sixty one thousand sixty eight thousand for brand new. It's sixty-one plus the upward. Right. right. So the question chief maker, did the uh did you get any kind of estimates at all from any mechanics? I mentioned a few. That's what we had recently. I mean, the appraisal helps too. Thank you for that. No, I did not because the simple fact they wanted over $200 a piece for appraisal. You mean for this? For an automotive dealership to look at over your oh. old vehicle and, okay. and tell you what, estimate what it's going to cost to upgrade it uh -huh. <clears throat> would be your minimum $200. He said, a guy said he. That would that two hundred dollars would, would uh, cover the cost of probably an hour, an hour of I think more than that would be a little bit more. Um, well, it's catch there is, and, and I probably shouldn't say this, is, is to say it both ways. If we took it to like this, this is what the official offer they offer eight thousand dollars for that whole person. If you were to have that company do an appraisal, an appraiser come in. Bad, they're gonna lower that dollar. Yeah, he said if we bought a cruiser, to, uh, bought a big from him today, whatever what it was, was they used my fake check, fake check here made out of the town of Conway Fire Room for eight thousand dollars. Well, I'm, no, I'm just yeah. Because we, I had never talked trade before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, we have to dispose of the old vehicle somehow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I did, I asked Barony if I could come in and meet tonight for this reason and for the other reason, discussing the two appraisals at over $200 a piece. Mm -hmm. So we still don't know how much it would cost to keep this on the road and continuing. You have, you have some rough estimates in your original proposal. For some repairs, as I recall. Uh, I don't over the next so. two years. Right? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a couple yeah. of numbers in there. Oh, those are previous years. Uh, FY20, yeah, 21, uh, 2300 dollars and 22. Those are previous years. Those are, okay, that's what's been spent already. Right. Okay. Oh. Nothing in the future because it, the list of of I made a list up of what the previous mechanic that we've been using for now made this list up for me. And he made, I, I added a couple of things that I never told him about. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what was like, when it rains, the water comes in and lands on the floor in front of the driver's floor. Yeah. 
and sits there in the pub. I don't know how it's getting young down. They come in and around the drummers and go out or something. I don't know. You don't see it like in anybody's hair. You can arrange them to mop it up. Yeah. The moment. You don't like the forward up. I think one of the other concerns that we had, and maybe you can help clarify for the mm -hmm. again, is um, you know, how often this is used. As I recall, you said mm -hmm. it was driven sort of a maximum of maybe 4,000 right. miles a year. So it's sitting most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, so just how many calls do you think it would go out on? Well, uh, lately uh, we have about an average of 65 to 90 calls a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fire calls, yeah. And uh, I have to go to fire chief's meetings once a month. There's no call for anything at all. Uh, sometimes we have special school safety meetings. We have three or four of those a year after those. Uh, we have just all fire all related. Uh, I do take it on all inspections. You know, and probably do 30 to 50 inspections a year, depending on. What, what the nature of it is, you know, whether people decide to change a lot of oil burners that year or install gas furnaces or you know, whatever it might be. Um, the other thing is, uh, oh, forget what was. We got the boat, the inflatable boat. Oh, the inflatable boat. Ball. We take those on mutual aid costs. Right. So we travel a lot and shell them fall and pop them and where we have to. How often does that sometimes happen? Happens, well, a year before last, in 2019, in COVID, we went out six times in that. Mm -hmm. but this past summer, we only got one call to go. Mm -hmm. And I also do assist the ambulance sometimes, uh, but the fire department may not be, well, they call, they call the fire department to assist with the ambulance, but they haven't gotten the call. Like we had last night, we had an ambulance call in town where Person fell down in the kitchen while they were cooking on the gas stove. So when they pulled out the ambulance, they also pulled out the fire department to go up there and make sure that this gas cooked for supper on the stove wasn't catching the house on fire. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to get to use residences. Mm -hmm. So um, so I do go on nature calls like that again. So I go on long distances? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the mutual the longest mutual lake call we ever went on to was the Oak and Irving. Yeah. In fact, somewhere a tanker went all the way down the eastern part of the state, but I didn't go with that because um, it wasn't not many guys in town. I'm afraid I've got to stay in town to get a call. Thank you. Now, something else that was brought up was taking the uh, highway departments uh, for cab pickup and, and bringing it over to the uh, Fire department, was that pickup truck in 2018? 14. 14, probably. Now, is that is that in the realm of possibilities? I suppose, but I do know that it's probably got a lot of miles on it. And I do know that it's been a few crashes. And I do know that it's a standard transmission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I personally wouldn't own a standard transmission truck. That's the simple reason that it's so much better than that. And my driving and parking at a scene. He's not the type of person. I, I'm always going out with accident scenes. And you know, somebody saw me the other day right out here in front of the building when that motorcycle car climbed onto that motorcycle. So it sat there for an hour and a half running. I'd be a little bit concerned. Sometimes we have to park on hills. And I'd be a little bit concerned to make sure the emergency record's working really well. And I think if you're out there and park on hills, it's nice to roll away. At. These are the automatic transmission you 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 put in park, you cut the brake, and you have to double those to catch the brake. Is there anyone else besides you who would be driving this truck? Uh, anybody can drive it. You know, I had incidents where we had gone out on fire call, and I was the first one to the station, so I went with the truck and the guys mm -hmm. and tried to get a full crew on the truck. Yeah, I got on the road as quick as we can. And if somebody else comes up, a member of the fire department comes up and wants to take it to the scene, they can. You know, so if it was a standard shut the off. I leave the keys in it when I'm going to practice in case they need it. But that doesn't happen. We get to set the public ways of doing it. Okay. Well, I have to also have a key in the clubhouse that's in a secure place that everyone knows. Okay. <laughs> um, so well, if, if it was a standard, 
the only people who could drive it. Oh, so people can't drive it. Right, some people can't. Yeah, some people can't. I've never driven a so, not only, not only firefighters, but you're going to drive the truck. That's my theory, man. And it probably has a lot of miles. Yes. Bob, your, your car truck is what year? 13. 2013. Yes. And as it's I recall in our discussions, it was going to cost, you're going to have to come if we decided to keep this truck, you've got to put four thousand dollars in it. Probably minimum. Okay. So, and how many miles? You know, the miles are not even that. It's got one hundred twenty-four thousand. How much? One hundred twenty-four thousand miles. Okay. But it's probably got five hundred thousand miles of running time on it. From the yeah. Other years of lease use it. See, and in my mind, it doesn't pay to put four thousand dollars into a vehicle like this. Four thousand plus. That other truck that sold. So it isn't there. That sounds like a good sweet spot for, for a used vehicle. I like that uh, vehicle. I don't know, you know, those prices, it's based on the uh, on the auction, basically. Based on the auction, what they got available. Yeah, right. So uh, what you would do is you have to set aside a some of the money and if the town pays work for that, then you go out shop, see what you come up with. And then even then it's gonna be put out again. I mean. At least they knew if they were going to bid on something, they would hold it for you while you bid process. And I, I just want to say that when I saw the result of your vote uh, on this, I did reach out to the mechanic that gave those estimates because I know them. And um, but you know, I'm, I'm I'm unfortunately not very mechanically inclined myself, so I my own independent knowledge of these things is very limited. Um, but the, uh, you know, and I just sort of wanted to get a sense, you know, with the real, you know, what, what, and, you know, and, and basically it's like, you really should fix, you really should get a new, um, yeah, that's really not adequate for its intended, but it is, you know, the, the thing about the fire department stuff is that, um, you know, even if you use it, Talk of most a lot of their apparatus, a lot of their equipment just sits around. Like, yeah. it isn't isn't used very often. Um, it's difficult to find often, but right. it's but um, but you when you need it, you really need it, and it's yeah. got to work, and it's got to be like work in good working order. Um, and so you know, just with with all of what they know is either wrong with that vehicle now. Or is going to be wrong in the near future. It, the, all of these things set up like a failure for when you really need it, like, and that's when you can't have a failure. And, and just that—that's the penny wise, pound foolish kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm all for saving money whenever possible. But, um, but it, this is like a critical, a critical bit of it, of our infrastructure, and. It, um, I also trust that the chief doesn't come looking for like equipment unless it's unless he feels it's really necessary and in the best interest to do it. And if I don't want to be the one, you know, waiting, you know, when a house burning down or in a boat sinking on the river or whatever, and not have the thing start and not have help come to get there because we chose to save a few thousand dollars. I felt that. When it comes to town meeting vote, I would uh, recommend I would uh, talk to the townspeople about new and used vote and let them decide. Mm -hmm. Or, or not even vote. capital state. You know I mean? I mean, they all we all know they have time to say. So. Yeah. Yeah. For so using capital stabilization funds, so you better it because it might be part of the two thirds vote. So we want to make sure that we have a well vetted decision that all options were, mm -hmm. were considered. I think I'd like to think we have. The, the issue with the new vehicle to me is just the length of time to receive that new vehicle. We're talking almost a year. So if we had if if we brought that to town vote, town would need to understand that whatever repairs are needed on the current vehicle need to be done as well. So it's an additional cost. I think also the town has a general history. I think it's safe to say this, that the town has a history of uh, preferring use when at all possible. Um, and we certainly impose that on 
uh, departments regularly throughout the past that I remember. And I think that that's, given the choice, that's going to be like a unanimous vote to, yeah. to do it that way. Yeah, anticipating that, that's why we, we, we want more, a little more information. Just to see when, at one time meeting that all options were considered. I mean, I actually think it's a better, it's a better strategy just to change the wording of the article. I mean, I didn't submit it, the fire department did, but I think it's a better, uh, better to just ask for used. Or replacement. Or, or yeah, replacement, replacement, yeah. replacement, replacement and, 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 and reduce the dollar amount of the request to 40,000. Well, yeah, or, the say problem with 40,000 is yeah. that is often a very good quote on a vehicle yeah. that might not be there. Yeah. Okay. So and, and the fifty is grouped in with with the yeah oh fifty includes the, the lift yes yeah. I'd say up to fifty thousand for yeah. a replacement vehicle. yes and lift yes which includes the lift now the replacement vehicle the fully the full price is the small price all right because tonight tonight's the night we have to do I mean this has right. to be done oh yeah tonight. we're, we're, we're here as long as it takes right now. oh yeah except we have to be out. Well, it's, yeah, <laughs> until the marijuana people come. Oh, well, hey, you know, be late. So cheap. We'll be late. We'll be late. You'll need it. We'll, we'll need it by then, right? <laughs> Since you submitted it, did you want me to change the language on the warrant? What did you want to do? Well, I thought originally maybe we should just wait and see what the town came to us. They can both options. Well, you need to have a recommendation. They can always you have the warrant wording in town meeting, yeah. then, right? So that, that's going to yeah. be another, another vote in town yeah. meeting if we don't change the wording. And, and I think that's that they require, part of the town might require us to the finance team to make a vote too, right? To make a I think it's just to be announced. Yeah, that's that's why I wanted to ask the chief if he wanted to alter. I this. think if we delay it, then we'll be, we'll do, we'll be going through the exact same thing again in town meeting. Which Hopefully, we won't have to. You could so change the language to say replacement rather than new or yeah, new. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. what I was curious. Is, is that replacement vehicle up to 50,000? Yeah, replacement yeah. Okay. So, from any available sources, up, up to 50,000 for a replacement pickup truck. Well, can we add, I'm sorry, with alterations? Yeah. And trading of gold. Yes, and trading. Yes. So with the right so now we're up to fifty eight. We're talking up no. to fifty thousand no. total for the total, not total. for the price of the vehicle plus the uplift and the minus yeah. the trade. Correct. Right. No, the trade in thousand. I understand. Well, no, that includes the trade in. So if you get eight k for the trade in, you have fifty eight thousand. Right. But so, yeah. but we don't need that for the warrant language. We don't. No, have we to, don't. Yeah. No, so I believe it out. What I have yeah, so no far. Problem. If this, if this is um, to see the town will vote to appropriate from any available sources, $50,000 for a replacement vehicle for the fire department will take any action relative. Okay. Well, it's not a pickup truck. Somebody's gotten frozen or else I have. I'm not sure. Yeah, hopefully we're not voting right now. I see all of us at home are not frozen. So I think it's probably at town hall. I believe that to be true. <laughs> nice to see Roy dealing cards there. Oh, okie doke. We may have to go back in. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Oh, hi, Chris. You're visible now. Yes, Bob. How's it going? It's good. Here they come. Okay. I'm so sorry. We don't know what happened. We lost you, but you're still here. So thank you. <laughs> We're all still here. <laughs> and I think it's still recording. Okay. <laughs> Back to the wording again, from what you said, just include the alterations, to include alterations. Um, do we want to get into all those specifics? I, I want that to be specified. Yeah, I think that okay. should be specified. Yeah. So replacement, but we, we were talking about the name for the replacement vehicle, vehicle, but do you want to, is there a specific, we should identify what kind of vehicle? 
We can do that in another seat. Oh. Okay. All right. Replacement vehicle. Yeah. Replacement pickup. That's not more like. I'm sorry, Bob. A replacement pickup. But it's not a pickup or replacing. But I could say. A replacement vehicles in, in the warrant is fine, and then okay. the motion comma. can specify. It's probably the best course of action. Okay, so comma to include what? Do you, what is that phrase again? To include up, yeah. uplifting. Okay. <laughs> Good word. We all need. Yeah. We all need <laughs> uplifting. Right. Sounds like shock absorbers. I don't know. I they're, they're... Yeah, yeah, a little bit. That's what I thought too. It just yeah. Okay. That places you in the low end of mechanical knowledge as well. Or you're right there in that continuum with me. So which includes, okay, to see if the town will vote to appropriate from any available sources $50,000 for a replacement vehicle, comma, which includes uplifting, comma, for the fire department for taking the action relative there to it. Is that okay? Is that okay, Mr. Chief? That's okay, but it's not. That totally cuts off some of the, not all, at all. Some of the taxpayers thought that we shouldn't be getting a new one or a new one. That cuts that totally off. Well, it's just replacement. So, so we're not specifying new or used. I mean, it's like it's kind of understood. You probably couldn't get a new one. Well, but he can't buy a new one for 50000 Exactly. So, you know, somebody mentioned to me, why don't you consider looking at a budget take on and I said, well, how much money you want to spend? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, you on the market. I know. That's over 100000 yeah. But, Bob, the other problem with getting a new one was it's a really long delivery. And that would then force us to do a lot of the improve the, uh, the, uh, that, again, the work on the U old. The Ford dealer told me when I got the original price on the new one that he'd already ordered out the, their 23s. And take almost a year to get them. But I noticed when I was talking with the shovel aid the other day, when I got this estimate, I just presented you people. He's got 23s coming in now. Uh -huh. Oh, good. Well, it's better. Yeah. So, hopefully, that when you buy new or used, you're buying something that you can actually see or, and not haven't got to wait forever to get it. So, we all know what happens then. So capital improvements is still in 50. Uh, yes, Bob, Seth, Roy, I think we're all in agreement to stick with yeah. the existing language. I don't know. I don't see Seth nodding his head. <laughs> but so because the language has changed, I think each. Well, I'm sorry, the, the value. Read. Value. So we're right. not changing the value of our initial. In other words, in the recommendations, you just need to vote based on the new language. In the yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I make a motion to approve the funding and new language for the Capital Improvement Committee on the new uh, replacement. I'm sorry, the replacement vehicle for the fire department. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Hi, right, sure. All right. Yes. Now I get to change it to four to zero because you have yeah, yeah. four to zero. zero. Thank you. Finance committee. Finance committee makes a motion to uh, make a recommendation on the uh, replacement vehicle. It's written in the warrant. It costs up to fifty thousand. And we need to make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That is four all. Thank you. Select board, I, I'm, I'm okay with not giving the town an option to get a new one. Um, so I, I, I would just just because the the the, 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 the uh, ones that are one and two years old. I'm going to give you a lot of years. You, yeah, you're still going to get you're still going to get ten years of service, which is what you could expect from a new one. And um, especially especially if it still has something on. Warrant. Yeah, right. yeah, and I—I I mean, everybody likes a new one, but at the same time, everybody, everybody doesn't like voting on someone else to get a new one when yours is ten years old in your driveway and has trouble starting. So, so we're not saving a lot of people's lives. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so for that reason, I, I would put a motion for the select board for the same language as the other two. Courses. 
Yeah. Yeah. I second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we see unanimous. We are in alignment on all three, all three. committees. And I hate to throw a spanner in the works, but I just realized <laughs> I just realized that because it's we can explain this if you want, or you can decide to revote capital because you have a new member, but you'd already voted on some. So you had three to zero on the other article. Right. So if you wish to revote that while you're here, so it's all uniform where you could just explain at town meeting that that was voted before it's set. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure. so make another vote. Well, no, I mean, for each one. For the for three, 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 four. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Three and four as well. Article what, three and four would be right. the ones you'd need to revote if you wish to do that. Okay. So okay. I'll need to explain. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have fun shopping. Have good evening. Have fun shopping. Well, not yet. You never know. Three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks. September 10th. Happy today. Yeah, yeah, I can just do that. I'll yeah. just explain that Seth was perfect. Added. Yeah, I just wanted to yeah make sure if you were aware. Okay. Yep. Are we going to go through these? Or yeah, we're doing. You're going to do yeah. three and four, so it's going to be those. It's up to you if you want to. I don't actually know. You, you you guys have already done this, right? Now. Oh yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Those are fun. So that's why I'm asking because if not, I can adjourn that. Yes. The capital improvement. Right, because there's no other capital improvement item. All right. All right. I'm going to make it a motion to adjourn the capital improvement committee uh, for today, November 14th. I appreciate everyone joining, and I think it was productive. <laughs> I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right great. All right. You at the marijuana meeting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that going to be on this same? Um... Yeah. Call. Same Zoom. Yeah. yeah, same Zoom. Well, we'll come back. We'll shut down and we'll restart it, that one. It'll be either live, you can go down to town hall, or it'll be um is it the same password and everything? Yes. Okay. That's why we have to be done by quarter seven. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Um Great. article three is which is what we're on to next. See if the town will vote to appropriate from available sources ninety two thousand for a new chip for the highway department. Finance committee was three to one. Capital improvement committee was three nothing. Finance committee, um, you don't need to justify your vote to us or anything. No, but we do have some questions, and even those who voted in favor still had some questions. And one of which was, um, we have no town bylaws about trees, right? Mm. But they're state laws. They're state laws. So can we can we get like a little background on why all of a sudden Ron is like feeling like he has to yes okay. take responsibility for all of this? Yeah. All right. I'll do this. And, and, and my the, the, the my sigh my sigh of exhaustion has nothing to do with you or I, I get whatever. It. Yeah, um, I get that. No, but, so tired of um so if for for um, as long as there's been a highway department here, it's been the policy of the highway department that if a tree needs to be cut, the highway department cuts it and the landowner removes it. Mm -hmm. And the belief was that um, we, we, the town only had rights of way, it didn't have ownership interests, mm -hmm. and that none of the trees were the town. So um, several residents, however, um, this past year, um, became unsatisfied with the status quo and and also saw how many of the legal advertisements in the newspaper involved requests by towns to cut trees and that there is a law called the shade tree emission law and it's been in existence since the 1960s and the town has never ever complied with it and it's not this highway boss. It's not even the highway boss before him. It's the highway boss before him. And, he, um, and so basically, um, we, uh, the, as, as concerned residents noted, you know, it, and, and, you know, I, I'm not really in favor of like demonizing anybody that insists that you follow the law as a, as a town. I mean, that, that's everybody's right to do that. And, um, you know that, but basically, whenever the town wants to cut, whenever the town highway department wants to cut a tree, and there is 
the residents, the, the law actually says whenever the town wants to trim or cut a tree, yeah. but the, our town attorney has advised us multiple times that the way courts have interpreted that is that it's um, it's only a trimming that is the same thing as a cutting, a, a trimming that is so extensive that it involves a cutting that requires the notice. So um, we are going, so even though the plain language of that law would seem to indicate otherwise, we are going with our attorney's recommendation because that is why we pay our attorney. Um, and we, we are setting up, we have a process set up now, the next time the highway department wants to cut a tree, um, they will, the tree warden will post the required two weeks of legal advertisement the, 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 and um, the, the, the tree itself has to, has to be posted. Mm -hmm. And there will be, the, and the select board is also the new shade tree commission and has to have a hearing for the tree. And there are a group of residents that will be arguing, presumably, to pardon a given tree. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so but, that's so. So I, I this leads to more questions for me. Like, what has the attorney said is that is our liability under this if if we don't continue the fight? I'm sort of interested in what's the downside. So the downside is we could be sued. We would lose the lawsuit. We could be sued and by a by, res by res concerned res residents okay. to comply with the law. We would lose the lawsuit because the law effect does uh, does pertain to us mm -hmm. because we are a town and mm -hmm. the law pertains to all towns. Um, but the worst that would happen is the judge would say you have to comply with that now. But we could also be potentially ordered to pay attorneys fees, especially since there's all these public noted public meetings on camera that says we know about this and we're just yeah. deliberately choosing not to do it. <laughs> like if we were going to not do it, we wouldn't be talking Don't about it on. now because uh, we just made the ability to not do it like way worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, Phil, it seems like I understand there's just two different, there's the cutting of trees and then there's the trees that tip over. Yeah, and that, it seems like there's like two. That's correct. Trips. If it is true, if, if when they tip, like when they tip over and no hearing, just yeah, just do it. Yeah, just yeah, take it care of it. Seemed like Public that's safety. where the chipper come from. Was these trees? And Ronnie was saying, "Well, before you just could push them into the bushes, but now they could be removed, right? You know." Yes. And now I don't know how extensive that is from town on. On the Hussek Turnpike, there's plenty of trees that are pushing their bushes. Yeah. I don't know anyone that complained about anything. Some people go tandem with the wood, and some of them are so rascally, they don't go near them. And those things aren't going to fit in an 18-inch chip, even though that's one humongous piece of machinery. So I see the trees being cut by the town as a separate issue from and trees tipping over. And my sense from listening to Ronnie is, this chipper stuff is from the trees tipping over. It's for both. It's for both. There's and, definitely and, been mission creep in the last few years on the around the town doing the tree work, the Warren Brook Road, the Whaley Road. You know, it's a, it's a mission creep, not a criticism, but it's like, well, because then it also seemed like Ronnie was like, well, his crew isn't going to be involved with doing any of this work. Like yeah. he's getting the chipper, but it doesn't seem like he's figuring his highway crew is going to be doing this work. Who's going to be doing? It? Well, that's a nice question. Yeah, no, the crew will be doing the work. There's a couple, there's two of the guys on there. Well, you told that. us at last meeting. We, well, what that what that would do to his budget? I mean, it's, <laughs> what he was saying didn't seem like he was well, thinking right. they're doing. It. There was a hint that a, that a, a new hire was going to be necessary. Yes. Right. And comply with the law. Yeah. So if we're gonna write something up, we better write all the numbers that are included. Yeah. I um, just think we're getting ahead of the game on yeah. all of this. And does the town need to pass? I voted no. And do we need to pass any bylaws with regard to the tree, the tree law, or does the state law just the state exist? law applies? Okay, so we don't yeah, you know, I, I, I like the percentage of affordable housing in town. That's a state law since the 60s, too. And soon that. And most towns don't, and, don't meet it. No, and, and, and all of those towns are vulnerable yeah, in, in many different ways. Absolutely. And one of, one of the most unpleasant ways is for a developer to come and require the town to spend town money for a developer's project. Yeah. And we are highly vulnerable to that. Oh, yeah. um, and like we actually, 
we just this year we created the town's first affordable housing then habitat for humanity that and a bylaw that creates that mm -hmm. um, which makes us ahead of a lot of towns but we're getting, we're getting back to the chipper the concern i have is the tree work i just know from being involved with people who do professional tree work the workers comp rates are through the roof they're basically unaffordable and uh, if you're going to be doing this type of work i just would ask that uh, someone work with ron sweet maybe he's already to get uh, different rates because we already have it though yeah, yeah. because right. they use the chipper so they're already covered yeah so we're already covered so it won't affect our workers comp rates at all actually our rates have gone down because uh the last uh, uh, significant loss came off our loss history from mm -hmm. five years ago okay. and we're doing better now than we have been in the past <laughs> so theoretically, a lot of people didn't see them up in the trees. No, I, yeah, well, they're basically not a come down. Yeah, I would, I would, I, I, so I, I'm saying. really concerned about that because I can tell you, it's a $350 trial of the way our entertainment. We talked to Ron about that, mm -hmm. and and he was pretty clear that this is all, this is not, this is all covered under right. existing. So when, yeah, when they walk at highway department in the town, they're factoring in the, the broad spectrum of work from paving roads to tree work that's what he said he said that his people are doing tree work already so it doesn't it's not an additional correct because they're already renting chippers all right so they're already doing the work this would just be a switch from owning the chipper or renting to own it. you see i i could envision it's not a, a nasty lawsuit it's what I could do. Where the residents are saying, yeah. the "This is devaluing our property. It's making I can't sell my house or whatever because these two trees, they look horrible because they've been left to rot on the side of the road." Mm -hmm. Well, there, I mean, and that's what some of the residents brought up to us that there's a safety issue too, at least on Roanoke Road, as far as you know, like visibility and you know bikers and, and you know steep drop off. And, I mean, just the issues. Ice, with, ice covered dirt roads that you know, are easy to slide off to, and yeah. you don't and want to be penalized with giant trees well, sitting one foot off the road. It's the same way. Yeah, I got a bunch of dead trees. trees to see you waiting to fall over the green. green yeah, yeah, that's true too. But so but by the way, in the past when I talked to Ron about the condition of certain roads. Whatever he he would, I mean, you ask him. I think he would say that's half the reason for the roaring for the roaring brook down towards uh, the Waitley side to get the sun in there. You know, and the, and that is a big thing. So and and there's data. There's data. I've seen this that study that should, that says that. I accept that, but I also you know, there there have been times where you cross over to the next town and it's and it's. It's funny because the northern end of town, it's the opposite. Um, things are better here than in Shelburne, but the southern end of town, it's the reverse. And I'm not sure why. It's not the sum over in that stretch of road. We had one final question. So we were going to fund this through free cash, not the have stabilization funds, or what were you thinking about? Well, I do not yet have the amount of certified free cash this year. I'm hoping to. I've been told it will be available before um, special town meeting. Oh, good. So, yeah, but actually, um, I would love to to meet with the finance committee once it's certified, the whole financial team, and talk about that. Because I was thinking of a second option, you know, that we might vote to replenish the stabilization, but we have to use that to purchase the shipment. So I do know there's a year and a half lead time. We're actually going to get it delivered and pay for it, you know, from free cash. It's all. It's would we'll be mindful of our stabilization fund as well. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then ARPA money is out of the question, right? I'm just thinking of questions. No, it's not out of the question. It's not. But no. Okay. It would be the, the. Well, no, actually, I'm sorry. It wouldn't make sense to do it at a town meeting because it's a select board vote. To yeah, it's for the vote. I'm saying that's what ARPA money is not, is not being considered by the not. We do have about another 104,000. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, I guess I would I would probably envision this coming from the um, capital stabilization, but I would definitely like to meet the finance and capital. Yeah, if we can get three cash certified for between now and December of the the, the, With respect to the ARPA money, that I know it's sort of the current goal. It, you know, now that the cost of money of borrowing is is so much higher than it was two years ago, um, the you know the it makes a lot of sense to use that ARPA money to reduce or eliminate the need to borrow. 
for the public safety building work and for the town hall renovation work. And that's what we intend to use the ARPA money, the, the ARPA money for. Okay, good time. Thank you. We can eliminate borrowing altogether. Yeah. And and do major good work for town infrastructure and stuff that really needs we really need the public safety building fixed up. Yes. And um, and we can we can affect being able to close town offices, move people, move everybody over here, sell that building, which is in good shape and would actually result in a sales price that would help town finances. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, sure. all a good thing. Thank you. So we'll be busy in the budget season. How you even started? You're seeing us a lot more. No, so, I mean, yeah, all that being said, I think the chipper, th there are people that I know in town that I have expressed an opposition to it that that just don't, that, that want us, th there are people that I, I know want to want highway department leasing everything and buying nothing. Yeah. Um, and that's <clears throat> done for, uh, to me, that makes more sense for a private entity that gets tax breaks for leasing. Rather than yeah, you can a government a government um, can't lease this state right it's, right it's rules just, were changed in 2016 it, it pretty much changed. exactly yeah. exactly um, not an option <laughs> not to mention how much it costs to lease this yeah. piece of equipment yeah so yeah. Ron had come to solution oh yeah well just to let you know Ron had come to the improvement committee yeah. asking for yeah. some rate as well for the three hundred thirty thousand oh, okay but okay. we asked how much it costs to rent it. And it wasn't very much. Plus, you can manage when he's going to use it and when he's not. You yeah. can't do the same right. with the chipper. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other thing to, rem to remember, too, is that anything for the highway department, there's a good, what is it, one fifth of the households in the town that live on River Street, Main Street, whatever, whatever all the different names are for Route 116, mm -hmm. who's complete. Um, you know, road care, tree care, everything is taken care of by the state, and um, and don't really see themselves as having as having any need for the highway department at all, let alone highway department equipment. They can show, they can show the road in front of them. Um, but but I mean, yes. So basically, whenever the highway department requests anything, there's going to be no votes, and there's going to be people in opposition. Yeah. Um, we're anticipating. I'll, I'll bring snacks for the uh, time, and we'll have them. Yeah. So, did Ron also explain to you guys that um, the chipper is a lot like if we've got a new vehicle for the fire department? It's a year out. Yeah, year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so just like renting renting also, and there's another four grand or so right. next year. Right. Right. More than that. Yeah, he came up with two thousand month. Yeah, Jim's yes. Tree Service of Greenfield. Exactly. Yeah. 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 As opposed to four hundred a day, which is a lot better. <laughs> yes. Right. So. Right. Um, and then just let you know on our last select board meeting, a couple of residents, they are going to be looking into it on the wood bank, like some other towns do, but that's probably and then take a lot of research and ways out of them. Yes. I will say that for as long as I have been on the finance committee, which is a long time ago, every year, every other year, a wood chipper has come up, come before us. And so my comment really is. It probably really is a need for it. <laughs> it's, yeah. there's, the uh, the uh, highway chiefs are so persistent about it, and we we have been very obstinate all, after all these years. So, especially with our realization of our actual obligation or duties, what we actually have to do. You're right. They have to put thirty-five thousand. My man. Well, so, um, control and pay the all right. So, is the select board ready to vote on this? I am. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Here to make a motion. I move that we recommend from appropriating from any available sources $92,000 for a new shipper for the highway departments. Um, and can I also make a motion on Article 4 at the same yeah, time? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And um, to also appropriate from any available sources $7,000 for a new chip box for the highway department since if we get the chipper, we need the box as well. Mm -hmm. Second that. Second both motions. All in favor? I I it's unanimous. Well, yeah, yeah, this will be that'll be interesting. We'll get everybody in a good mood to argue for the rest of it. Leave it to the end, so they all stay. <laughs> That's what the transfer states are for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go on, go on. yeah. Speaking of which, um, so did, did anybody want to say anything more about our report? 
No recommendations in the finance committee yet. Yeah, Article five. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I sorry. I was. I already moved on. Yeah. Article five, finance committee did not vote. Correct. So that's where we're at now. Um, Article five to see the town will vote appropriate sources thirty seven thousand to repair the transfer station landfill tax. Um, yeah. Um, submitted by the town administrator. <laughs> so on, on this one, I'm sorry. I, I wanted Ron to add um, the minimal cost it would take to add parking spaces for the, the mall, the transfer station mall. We talked about that last yeah. time. Because if he's going to dig everything up, might as well do it all in one shot to keep the price. So you down. want to asphalt it there, not just gravel? No, just gravel, but I want that cost because if they're going to have all the equipment and tear everything up. I think we've got gravel. Yeah. We've got gravel and we've got equipment. It shouldn't be a cost. Okay. I think you could go When was the last time we had the we had this one? Uh, he said it was only three, like three or four years, years ago. ago. <laughs> yeah. But this is a much more extensive repair. I mean, it, all of us have been up there. There's quite a hole. You're ice skating on it. Yeah. <laughs> we do bumper cars. Yeah. <laughs> cars, any of you have. So, so, so this 17,000 question, would it? Uh, 37. 30, 37. 37. Would it, we're going to go down and get rid of all the uh, underlying uh, decomposing substrate material? No, unfortunately. that's And that's, of course, the problem is that it's a, an old wood stump. A wood log pile. Yeah. Um, so what they're going to do is remove the asphalt and then try to fill in as much as they can with other materials to, you know, so that then they can pave over it again. I don't know any way for us to truly fix the situation. Um, I will say that I have had some conversations trying to figure out if there's another place in Conway where we could have a transfer station because this is not the ideal place. Yeah. That's a discussion for another day. Yeah, that's, Just because yeah. we have to. That's discussion. We have, have to fix. Where you have to fix the cap too. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, because we have to do it for next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would yeah. take way longer than that. Yeah. Transfer station. Yeah, we don't have another. There, there is no other. No, no. and that's no. so. I mean, I have. So anyway, so that. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I think unfortunately because of the situation, we just have to fix it. And, yeah. Yeah. So we're still looking at the uh, disposable capital stabilization fund for this, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Most likely. So, so I, I make a motion that we uh, vote to approve thirty-seven thousand dollars. Hopefully, completely repair next year. Second. Second. I should have just gone in person, huh? Well, I'm glad to see a face behind the, the byline that I see all the time. Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm I'm a new resident. So. Oh, nice to meet you. You yeah. just coming in, hanging out, checking out. Well, I'm a North Poland Road resident, so that oh, okay. was my initial reason, but now I'm just interested. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they're pretty dry. <laughs> when did you move to town? A, a little over a year ago. Oh, okay. Long enough to know how important it is to have access to Route 116. Yeah. <laughs> 
Are you cut off behind it, I'm guessing? Yeah. That sucks. Well, it's worse for other people than it is for me, but it is uh, an inconvenience for sure. There they are. Oh. Right. Technical difficulties. So, so, do we have to read the, re the finance committee vote? Yes, we should repeat the finance committee vote. Yes. Well, so, the finance committee, I make a, I make a uh, motion to summon to approve the allocation of thirty-seven thousand dollars to repair the Conway Transfer Station parking lot. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries four zero. Thank you. Aye. And select board. Um, I move that we appropriate from all available, any available sources, thirty-seven thousand dollars to repair the transfer station and fill cap. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Article six. To see if the town will vote to appropriate from any available source nine hundred and seventy dollars for paying a bill from a prior year for storm damage related to log and brush removal or take any action thereto. So, um, actually, know exactly what this bill is all about and how it, the sad saga of how it came I mean, to be I, here. So how old is the bill? Article so, seven, because that's. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. So, well, Article Seven, Article Six is for. Um, so, the, I mean, it, it is public record. So, this is um, who does the Maggie um, Potter does the billing for Nick. Oh. And Nick does tree removal, and tree trimming, and this was um, uh, tree falling on road in middle of night, and Nick being called in middle of night to remove the tree, and that was from. Last fiscal year, and uh, I guess it was from like that that October storm or something. And and the the, the bill it depends who you have, who's telling the story as to when the bill whether the bill was ever submitted within that fiscal year or not. Um, but the bill uh, was not paid, and these are local residents who went out and did the town a service in good faith and. And actually build the town very reasonably as well, compared to all the work that they did. I saw the bill, and um, uh, it's something that just you really should pay. Um, and it should have been paid a year ago, but it wasn't. So, but it will be now, hopefully. So that's second. <laughs> well, we, we can move both Article Six and Seven because they're related, correct? No, Article yeah. Seven is to do with landfill monitoring, not oh, right. not. So, they're both prior year bills. Prior year both year year year. just didn't happen to make it to our inboxes in time to pay it after that fiscal wow. year was closed out. So mail is slow. Yeah. <laughs> so I make a motion to approve Article Six. Second. Yeah. Yeah. in favor. Aye. four. Now Article Seven. What was that about? Um, that was that so we have landfill monitoring that has to go on every um every other year so we get three different inspections over there okay. so this was related to they do testing of the wells and stuff because we have a closed landfill yes or, yeah so they had done 75 percent of the job um which we had paid for on time somehow this bill got sent to the board of health or didn't they didn't ever arrive on my desk wow and so they were following up it's like wow okay yeah we've been put that on and yeah, make sure that the, uh, the accounts are payable they have the right name. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you know, to be fair, it switched from Board of Health to the CF yeah. board. So, so. Who, who, who's the vendor? Who, who does the monitor? Oh, gosh, sorry. I, I'm pretty sure it's from this bus money. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? Questions? Yeah. We have no choice but to pay. I make a motion. Be, uh, I make, I make a motion to approve nine hundred twenty dollars to pay for the uh, land for monitoring. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 four. All in favor. Thank you. Um, so I'll make a motion that as a select board, we um, mm -hmm. we recommend voting in favor of Article Six and Seven to pay prior bills or paying bills for prior fiscal years. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Six, you know, six, six and seven past. Yeah. 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 Now, Article 10 requires finance committee to be setting up of the special volume fund for the police detail work. I don't know about that. 
It's not actually expending any money, it's parking it there. Well, I think we have to approve the setting up of the fund, right? Mm -hmm. Setting up, it, well, yeah, maybe not the setting up, but the funding it afterwards. Attorney Nichols has read suggestions to the finance committee. I'm sorry? Has Attorney Nichols made any kind of way in on this? We need to have to, do we have to, the finance committee should vote in? Um, honestly, I can't remember. We I did review this and I mean, we don't have too many rather special revenue funds. I know that we have right. the SPED revolving fund, which doesn't be quite part of the school budget. It doesn't require the finance committee. Uh, vote. Well, I can't imagine it can hurt. I, I don't think we should probably set it up. Yeah. So if you had some information that we get fifty dollars an hour as the base rate for police detail, I mean, this is the town making money, so I have no personal with you. It just takes a lot of collect. I'm sorry. It just takes ninety to one hundred twenty days to collect the money. It, yeah, it depends on the vendor, and most of the time it comes in fairly promptly. But this yeah, is literally good. just so that the officers will get paid on the normal payroll. And <laughs> no. Dog doesn't vote, so he better ain't no bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he liked right where he was at. <laughs> Objected to the change in location. <laughs> so, uh, so I, so I mean, typically, how much money is out? We're talking ten thousand. So, Matt, the max is ten thousand for the three calls. Pretty much, that, that I mean, this is what what Mike and Jan both reviewed and said. Oh, this is a pretty safe amount for us okay. to. Okay. It's basically a line of credit. <laughs> Yeah, with no interest. So Article Eight is setting up the special revenue fund, and then Article Nine is putting ten thousand dollars into it. Yes, yeah. correct. So and the, the the wait right now for them to actually get payment from something can be up to a year. Up to a year, wow! Um, but huh. usually, usually it's around six months. That's um, why the that's why the state has trouble with the the bond in the yeah. Yeah. You know, getting sons to do it, absolutely. You don't get paid until the following November. Yeah. Yeah. So we should vote each article separately. Article eight and nine should be uh, Yes, yeah, they were separated out because one is creating the other is then mm -hmm. seeding it. All right. So I make a motion to approve article eight as worded. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Carries four all in favor. Article nine. I make a motion to approve the article as presented for setting up the ten thousand dollars special revenue fund. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries four. Fifty dollars an hour. I think when, when uh, Officer Lament came in uh, about a year ago, I think there wasn't much of an increase. In the, I think it was about fifty dollars an hour fixed back then. I mean, it varies. I think that for EverSource pays fifty dollars an hour, so it hasn't changed that much. It depends on the vendor, but Jan said yeah. that generally it's about 50 and then 75 to five and a half. I mean, it's money to the town. Actually, it's really important for us to be able to retain some police officers on our staff. It's yeah. because that's the only chance that they get to actually. Absolutely. And make friends, right? Yeah. I right. think it's a tough game. It's actually really dangerous. That oh, yeah. it's one of the most dangerous things that officers in our state does do is that, and we actually, you know, there was a fatality um, in Runway Town limits of a state trooper that a lot of us knew um, not that long ago, just doing exactly oh, yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So we have to make a motion. Yeah. So I'll make, make a motion on um, Article 8 to create the. Um, special revenue fund for purposes of timely payments of police officers and performing outside duties and article nine to appropriate ten thousand dollars dollars to such fund. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Well, I make a motion to adjourn the finance committee meeting jointly with the select board. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll save the uh, we'll save the candy bars for the, for the <laughs> you might need them. So as soon as I hear about the free cash, I'll I'll let you know. Oh yeah, it's been certified and we can I'd like to hear about free cash. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all very much. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you.
Oh, I sliced it together. Okay, I have some clarification from Lee about what this actually means. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so our senior low income personal exemption for um, real estate taxes. So right now, anyone over the age of 70, the way I understand it from Lee, if you're over 70, you're low income, you can apply for a real estate tax exemption. Um, but the application requires you provide detailed information on your annual income. Currently, there are limits on one's income to qualify for the exemption, and the limits have long been $25,000 per year for an individual or $40,000 per couple. They haven't been revised in a very long time. So if we vote yes on this article, all that does, it allows um, us to increase the limit, the income limit, um, by the percentage increase in the consumer price index. And this income does not include any retirement benefits, correct? This is only for a working a person working at the age of seven anymore? That I do not no, know. Gross receipts, please gross receipts. Yeah. Yeah. So, that so includes Social Security. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my thing is that the DOR does not determine what the consumer price index that is. I don't I didn't understand that language. Um as published by the DOR, maybe I don't know, but they don't determine it. But whatever. Mm -hmm. um, no, but maybe the DOR, they don't determine what the consumer price index is. I mean, but they, but maybe the DOR determines. Actually, that's a very good question. Yeah, it should say, you know, they do not do the CPI. <laughs> no, I'm not. What's that quote? From? What is the quote? On end quote? What's the quote from? <laughs> Um, catch Lori. Yeah. What she wants us to do. I mean, I could just go I mean, look up chapter 59, section 541C, which is what it's quoted from. Mm -hmm. um, but I think ultimately what this does, I mean, if someone... If an individual has income over twenty five thousand dollars a year, these, I, I think that means we can still provide them. Right. So basically, it's basically saying the level to be poor um, does get to go <laughs> up, you know, right. a yeah. little yeah. bit. Exactly. So. The poorest among us can be a little no, bit poor, richer every year. Poor is a very bad word to use. Right. Lower income. <laughs> but it did, in other words, it but, hasn't been adjusted as years. And we do yeah. get to from now adjust. As long as it says increase, not decrease. Yeah. All right. I'm just it's probably, right it's now, probably this week. We be well enough alone. Mm -hmm. Section five. Mm. Yeah, so that would mean that, like, you know, if your social security benefits increase by, you know, 5% one year, then we're going to up the, yeah. whatever, the poverty limit for allowing a real estate tax exemption, which seems to make sense to me. Yeah, the consumer price index is tied to inflation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I would say just need to be. I'm just trying to find the actual quote in there, but it is from the from that chapter. Yeah, I'm sure. So, so if I leave it be, you mean like not take any action? No, no. Leave it be. <laughs> leave the quote. Leave leave the language in the, in oh. the article. The same. Oh, that, that, that's I. That's I. You don't not, need I, to substitute the word published for the word determined or anything like that. Yeah. No. I I I think the language is fine. I had asked for clarification so that we yeah. the town law. I think I that's good. I'm glad, I'm glad you did. That, in actually. plain English. That was good. Thank you. Um, make a motion to approve article to for the select board to recommend approval of article ten as written. Uh, we'll second that. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Once again, we're going to be disappointing the person in the back of the room that wanted some dissension in a select board vote last time. Remember? <laughs> After, oh. you're, after you're not disagreeing on anything. <laughs> well, let's well, wait. Yeah. yeah, we still have to talk about the transfers. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Article, oh, article, article 11. Article 11. Um, so this, yeah, you know, I've actually been thinking about this one for years. So to see if the town will vote to request special legislation providing for the recall of elected officials as provided for in the draft legislation on file at the town administrator's office and as provided at town meeting. And as just appeared in your email. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I just realized I had not forwarded that, the sample language from um, town council, which we would include in the warrant. Or, sorry, no, not in the warrant, that is a handout. Um, So, um, one of the things that 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 I and this this would um, I guess I guess it was me that 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 asked that this be done because I've wanted to do this for years, and um, uh, be, because years ago I was in a situation where I was sort of chafing under the uh, situation where some somebody was just deliberately ignoring the repeated expressions of the town as expressed at town meeting, just because they didn't agree with it. And it was as if all those votes didn't matter um, to that person. And there, there has to be a relief valve for, for, for if that occurs again, where, where if an elected official um, is just thumbing, you know, thumbing their nose at a town meeting vote and just not going to carry it out, not going to let it be carried out because they're in a position of authority that they can do that, um, then you know, it, that, this is not okay. We have to be able to do something. So then that something is a recall procedure. Um, and in looking at it, the, basically the law allows for uh, certain communities, if they're structured, they can, Form about like the if, if you're a charter, uh, if, if your form of government is a town, is a city charter, like Greenfield, then you can have your own re elected recall bylaw. Um, but we cannot because we're just a regular old town. So, is there existing legislation then that governs there, our recall? There are, there are several that the state has approved. And so that's what our lawyer sent us is one that the state has approved. And it's not, it's not an easy thing. It's kind of unpleasant. Um, just, uh, you know, but it's, it's sort of, you only do it in a break in case of emergency kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's not, it would not be, it's, it's not envisioned for anybody, you know, right now, whatever. Um, but th there's all kinds of time frames. It, it adds a lot to the town, to the clerk of elections. They have to certify all these things in rapid, full, rapid time frame, um, the numbers of signatures, et cetera, et cetera. And they, um, uh, you know, and, and if, if there's whatever, it, it, it has to be so far out from an election as well. It can't be something that's done within like six months of that person for re-election or something like that. I don't know. But. So if, like, what's, is, is there an existing process? If, like someone wanted to recall an elected official and come right No, there's no, there's no process. We have no pro that. nothing. Okay. It can't be done. All That's right. the process. It just, it's, it's we're stuck. Yeah. And so it's right. I always thought, I always thought that wasn't right. So that's what this is about. Um, I was not aware that he was not recalled. I just assumed no, that, that would be There is not, and I, I, my, my first idea was to take Greenfield's monstrosity of a process, simplify it, condense it, and try to make it work. And our lawyer deep six that idea. Yeah, okay. I wish it was before I had worked on it. But. So this, so, so the language that we've been sent, this has been vetted by the attorney. This, is this was from. Towns. This is from. Okay. This is from town council. Okay. 
as the language that would be sent to our legislators to request the special legislation. Okay. So each, that just kind of is really surprising to me that each, that individual towns that have to like do this on a town by town basis. It's the same thing wanting a police officer to serve at the age of 65 or something that we actually have to go through that. We can't just do that. Well, I, that makes a little more sense to me than this. Um, yeah, well, I think the main thing is how it lays it all out, how the process for yeah, yeah. Like, so. I mean, this is obviously this would be yeah. a lot of work for this town to work, but I mean, that's that's like democracy. That's what I'm talking about. I yeah. really support there being the formal recall process for elected officials. All right. Um, move to approve Article 11 as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Article 12. We saved the best for last. Fact that it's still on here after all this. <laughs> <laughs> But well, we can take it off. No, right? you know, I know. It's like a major, a major accomplishment that we got in this block. Oh. Um, so to see to see if the town will vote to recommend to the select board a specific fee for permit stickers and set a limit on the number of bag stickers given at no cost to each household per year as follows. Uh, fee ten a ten dollars or b fifty dollars. Number of free bag stickers per household per year, A, 52, or B, 104, or take any other action relative thereto. Um, so there's, a, you know, you can, you know, we can talk about this a lot. We, we can talk about this all night too. But basically, it's just A and B. Each one of these, based on floor amendments, we could entertain a potential C or D if somebody, if the town thinks $20 or if the town thinks, um, you know, whatever, but, um, so there's a lot, I, I, I like how that, you, that, you know, you can actually, there's room, there's room to be responsive to a town meeting that you don't know what they're going to think. Um, so I, I, I honestly have reservations now about even having this as an article at all, because the way, as I read this now, and I've said this before, it almost seems like disingenuous to have to to put an article on here that we're asking people to vote on. It's not even a vote; it's a recommendation. And whatever, it, like it's not binding. Um, it just it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me to like bring this to town meeting, particularly a special town meeting, <laughs> which tend to be very poorly attended. Um, and I just feel like, I mean, all of, I, I feel like all of us individually have had conversations with people about, you know, moving to a pay as you throw system, but it, like we haven't done our due diligence as a select board, as far as, you know, unless people are really tuned in and they're reading the agenda and they're coming to um, our meetings, which we haven't had anyone here <laughs> for public comment to talk about moving to a pay as you throw system. And I just feel like this is not the right place to do it. Like it, like it doesn't, like, what are we asking them to vote on? We're not asking them to vote on anything. Nothing is binding. Um, so in what we've been talking about is really doing like a lot of that education about this is even on the warrant in the first place. Um, but I don't see why we're not doing that education like in advance. So before. I, I have to agree with you. Um, and as far as I know, Town meetings are supposed to be about three things um, payroll, salaries, appropriated funds, and the bylaws. And I don't think this meets any of that criteria. Not to mention, like you said, there, there's a lot of information that needs to be brought to our townspeople that I don't think we'll have enough time. <laughs> well, and even do that. I mean, especially if it's like the last article of special town meeting, if everyone sits through this, like, I mean, I, I just feel like it's kind of like, you know, what's the point? And then it, and then I feel like it kind of makes us look bad, like, oh, well, we put it, you know, it was a Warren article, special town meeting, but, but we haven't done enough, I think, just with that kind of like public education. And I feel like that's kind of our responsibilities as select board. Um, 
I mean, this almost seems like the opposite of transparency, like slipping it in, you know, like the very last word article on a special town meeting when it's something that whatever vote we take, we're, you know, we're going to make, um, you know, so, we're going to make this decision regardless, you know. So, um, a, cu a couple yeah. things. So, to, to me, like, I know, I know the rule book says what you're supposed, what town meeting is supposed to be for the guidebook, but for 200, but town meeting has always been much more than that, and that it's when when all we do is ask people for money, and yet the thing that is their closest interaction with their town government, the day of the weekly trip to the transfer station, when all of a sudden, to me, the worst thing is just all of a sudden say we're changing your relationship with that here it is because we are empowered to make that decision so we will um and, and, and but at the same time we can't just put something in there that makes whatever town meeting want we can't where, where we're agreeing to be governed by whatever town meeting decides we have to have guardrails on this decision because we have to be responsible to the cost of it and to the operation of it and so this is, you know, but, you know, it, so, so up front, you're saying that this is a non-binding referendum. However, the select board is voted <laughs> to approve and make it their action, whatever you're deciding here, so long as it fits within the got these guardrails. And the guardrail is, number one, the main thing that we need to take, well, first of all, the, the cost of it is, is, is totally out of control. That is $200,000 a year on the town budget. Um, we need to shift the cost in 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 a different direction, um, and, and that means reducing the amount of waste and changing how we as a town pay for that. Because right now everything comes out of property taxes; ten percent of it comes out of the user pay, the users of it through the permit thing. And we know that by switching to bags to the bag stickers, that that will change significantly. The, that that ratio to, to it being more being paid by users and less being paid by property by general taxation, which to, which seems fairer. And the other thing is that um, that that it's not enough to just as a community say, okay, we'll tighten our belts and we'll all promise not, you know, we'll all spend extra close attention to this. And we won't throw as much trash. We'll, we'll be better. We'll be better. Because the problem is that the large amounts of waste that we're generating that are way, we're punching way above our weight in like tonnage of waste that we're generating. It's it, we should not be all generating almost as almost as much waste as Deerfield. They're three times our size. And um and it's because we are throwing a, out a lot of deer, we are paying to throw out a lot of deer girls trash. And, um, and if you can prove that mathematically. And, and um, so it, it, the, the problem really is the, it's about 25 to 35 households in our town that are responsible for a large portion of the weight of our trash. And it's, it's how do you bear, how, how do you, the, the, those really are the heavy, heavy users that right now are just paying $10 per year like all the rest of us. And they're being subsidized by all the rest of us. And which is all well and good, but it's just too much. And we need to just sort of make this fairer and, and, and create an incentive to create, to, to create less waste. Or if you're not going to do that, then to pay her bag for the waste that you're agreeing to create. Yeah, and I don't, I don't dispute any of that. I guess my question is like, why, then what, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me that this is a town warrants part of them. Because there's the most number of people there and it's the best chance for people to learn. And, and we we ask like town, like we do really complicated zoning things. We just had a state election where there was like long, um, uh, um, you know, petition things for everybody to vote on that everybody was given 30 seconds to read and then vote on and everybody did just fine. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I mean, I just feel like we have to do that public education, but that's, that's like, that's, that's public education. 
that's not I just I just don't feel like like can, town we like can, we can have town a meeting is we can have a public um meeting beforehand sort of do do our own uh um, pre pre town meeting on this. I don't know that we're going to have time to be honest with you. Thanksgiving's like coming away. up soon, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of preparation. You can do it the night before, whatever. I, I just I have to say I I would be thoroughly relieved if this weren't on warrant, just because I I agree and I think if we could spend at least two public hearings, and I think people would come out to talk about trash, and if they're talking we're talking about prices. I, it, this affects everybody in town, so I think they'd come out. And pay attention, and we could lay it all out in front of them and say, "Here are all the issues." Could we have a meeting set up where, if we have the most amount of people in town at this town meeting, that we can say, "Listen, we're going to be discussing the transfer station." Sure. If you want to set the date ahead of time so that we can tell them at that meeting, absolutely. But we, I mean, so I mean, first of all, obviously, there's like there's a question of timing because you know the sooner we can like not be paying for materials trash, the better. Mm -hmm. But we do have a regular town meeting again in June. So if ultimately we decide this is something we want on the warrant, that's only six months out. So it's not like this has to be on special town meeting warrant. Um, and I feel like when we do, if, if we were to have a series of public hearings, that would be, there would, there would just be a greater opportunity for participate, to participate. Because we were talking already about how, what is it, 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning that we have the special town meeting. Like already we've had feedback. People are like, you know, I mean, even regular town meeting. <laughs> There are a lot of people who can't attend. So I feel like if we had a series of public hearings, it would be more inclusive. We can invite more participation. And again, like I said, I mean, individually, I think all of us have had conversation, but as the select board, we have not invited that conversation with the public. And to do so at a special town meeting, when we're asking people to vote on something that's not really a vote, it just really seems disingenuous to me. I actually think that the, the, um, the, the pausing things to have an uh, informational town uh, public meeting first is is it just it, it's a good thing to be able to say that you did but you know through the years we we i feel like we always fall victim to this line of thinking because it doesn't you still have to have a vote on it anyway and oh, basically yeah. well you don't the, so the select board could just do it all and that which is the whole point of like to me, that's you, you're missing a chance, a, a good chance to get buy-in from the town. Like when, when you listen to Jan about how this goes, she's like, "Oh, every town, the the first two or three months, everybody hates the select board, but they all get over it." And I'm like, "That doesn't need to happen. If you give people a vote, that doesn't happen. That it just doesn't. They, you get to say it's your vote. You decided it." Or, or you chose not to come, but and, and left that decision to your neighbors. But, um, but, but, it's, but it's not, I mean, but it's not that I guess that's what I think is like, we're not, it's not a vote, it's like we're asking people to provide input like you would at a public hearing. Well, it's not a completely free and unfettered vote, but it's 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 a regulated vote within the guide. With, with the, the only way that we could do it is it, um. We we can't we can't afford the risk of a vote that we would be bound by that would cause us to be irresponsible when it comes to the transfer things. So we have to have guardrails on it. We have to spell out what those guardrails are. I think this is like super transparent. It's like, but but the, the whole public meeting thing that you might get five people, you might get 10 people, you might get 20 people, but you're not gonna get 50 or hundred people like are gonna show up. And, um, and and that we're just like well, I mean, I feel like if that's the case, then then what's what's the harm in delaying this until regular time? If if we really want in the end to have this on the warrant, why can't we delay this? this regu regular town meeting. Regular town meeting. We're hard pressed to keep it under two and a half hours, and um, and, and this is the kind of thing that could go on for a long time, and that's why we. We chose that I wanted to do it in the special town meeting. We're doing the special town meeting to, to get this one on this to, to get governance of this transfer station under control. Um, and that that's the other the other reason though to to delay it is because the select board sorry the select board has not actually voted yet on what kind of program you're going to do. So to me, to put this on the warrant and say, 
you're asking them to vote on something that the select board has not yet made a decision that they're going to do. So to me, it's a little bit of the cart before the horse. The select board can do that in two seconds. Well, I think, and I feel like in a sense we kind of already mm -hmm. have, like we know which direction we're, we're leaning in, but I, I, it, it just like the more I think about it, this just doesn't seem like something that, that not only like does it not need to be a warrant article, it's like it's the opposite of transparency to make this a warrant article instead of starting with the, you know kind of the public education piece. Because, like we said, this could be, you know, like this could be like a two hour long conversation. And that's not like, I don't like, like we can do that. We can have five public meetings. You know? we, could, we could make sure that everyone knows that, like, the public comment period for every select board meeting we have, maybe a special town meeting, is we want to talk about the transportation. And we can record the meetings and have them available for people who couldn't make that meeting so that they can see what's discussed. And uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, just, I just feel like as a governing body, we just haven't done what the, we haven't done the right public outreach. I mean, so I'm not opposed to having it like if, if in the end we decide we want this to be more article, I'm fine with that. But it's, but you know, looking back at like that, I just feel like we haven't done up until this point the right kind of public outreach to mm -hmm. make this a warrant article for next month. Oh, yeah. Um... I don't know. So I guess when everybody thinks you're wrong, that's like always a good sign. It's for me, that's a good sign. It's, it's like a vote of confidence. I get nervous when everybody agrees with me for crying out loud. Um, so, you know, so basically, though, this it, it, it is a chair of the select board decision, and I think it's right to agree with it. It's not, actually. I'm sorry. What? It's a select board vote about what articles are included on the one. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's set up what you guys yeah. The only, the only, uh, the only one article that you select word not, not put on the warrant is citizen petition. Other than that, everything that's on the warrant as articles is a select word decision. So, any one no, of those. I don't, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's just the same thing with an agenda item. Uh, no, it's, it's not. I've reviewed it with town council. I'm sorry. It actually is. Okay. Um, yeah, so I very much want this to be in there. So I, I hear what you're saying now. I want to stop talking about this. I just want it to be done. You just, just can't keep going. It's just, this has to, we have to be done with this. We put too much time into this. It's never going to go away. Well, ultimately, it will. Yeah. <laughs> but and right now we have it set up so that this is going to be like a half an hour town meeting, and we can do this now. We can just get it done, and it, it'll be done. And we know we're moving the ball in the right direction, and it'll go just fine. I didn't realize even we still have what I didn't realize we have public hearings to explain it. We're still going to have to do that. We won't be able to do that. So I I I created a spreadsheet. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yes, it was awesome. Right. So I I wanted to incorporate that along with what Jan brought in a PowerPoint that I feel will take more than a half an hour to go through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do think it would be a couple hours to explain and look through. These are our surrounding towns. This is what the other transfer stations are costing and what they're doing to make up the cost and then even their tax rate, right? Showing every, laying it all out for them show them how far behind we are and how much money is actually being allocated from our taxes to the transfer station. Um, it's a lot of information to go through. I, I just, I, I personally have to agree with Eric on this one. I think it's, it, we should do a, a public meeting, public hearing to have enough time to explain all of this and have it in the right format for everyone to understand. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I guess, like, it doesn't, I'm, I'm, I'm very wary of setting a precedent where we put things on the town meeting warrants that don't have to be there, you know, like asking for input in a town 
meeting that is that is really just you know it's not binding it's just a recommendation I, it's it, it, i mean like you said it's like park before the horse and kind of seems the exact opposite of transparency as opposed to doing like that outreach in the first place where we say this is what we're thinking about come to us you know and we'll have a series of public hearings like the opposite of transparency is to like you know, make this the last warrant article on a special town meeting and then expect to cram all of that information in at the last minute and then and then that's it. This is We're what will happen. This is what'll happen. People will see this article and they'll say, wait, what stickers? <laughs> and then it will be a long conversation like that. Or like why is this the first that we're hearing about any of this? Because again, like I said, individually we've all had these conversations. As a governing body, I don't think we've done our due diligence. Great. Um, I'm going to make, make a motion to approve Article 12. I don't know what else. Somebody can second it or not second it, and then that could be another motion. So approve Article 12. That's right. Another yes. I'm not seeing any second. Is there another motion? I say that I'm going to have to make a motion to remove Article 12 yeah. from the warrant. Is there a second? I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Um, that's the word. Before this, so I'm going to have to print out the warrant so you can sign it. Is there? I'm going to have to run around and get CD books tomorrow anyway, and I think it'll just be easier if I do that back in the office. Can I stay here? I want to do it right now. Right now. Right now. Okay. okay, but do we have to, um, do we have to finish the, we have to finish the meeting when you adjourn the meeting. In seven minutes. Sorry? In seven minutes, we can do that, right? Adjourn the meeting. What, what do we have next? Oh, we have to vote to close the warrant? Yeah, we have to vote to close the warrant. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't get it from the pen. That's no thing. Um, I make a motion to close the warrant. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 What's in there? Oh, yes, so that's where my comment is concerned. Oh, yeah. uh, next meeting. Uh, 21st, the warrant. 21st, I'm surprised. Next meeting is 21st, 6 o'clock in this room. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Favor? Aye. 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 Aye.